Hey everybody, Edgy Tim. How are you? Welcome. It is Monday, June. What is today? The 15th? The 6th? No, it's not the 15th. It is June. You think I'd know this before I start recording. Monday, June 17th, uh, early here in the afternoon. And uh, again, just wanted to. I think this is going to become a weekly feature, I think, especially at this time of year. There's enough going on with the recruiting world that I think it's kind of important to talk about from time to time. I know we have another week or two before we go up against a dead period. Uh, so again, there's some interesting things to talk about, especially since the camp season began and uh, May, May 31st, I've been able to go to a handful of different camps. I did a couple of days at North central college, did uh, a one day camp out at NIU, uh, a couple other things that have popped up I've been able to do. So getting a, a good a good feel and a good handle. And folks, I tell you what, and, and you can tell by the title of this, uh, it shouldn't be a real big shocker, but the never-ending, always-changing landscape of, of college football recruiting is changing once again. And in case you didn't realize it, most of you, especially you 2025 players and parents that are in the middle of this, uh, I think you realize more than anyone. So let's Let's talk a little bit about it. Let's give you some of my observations of what I've seen this summer and see how they jive with what you see and what you're hearing and, and your observations as well. Um, I, I think one of the biggest things that have stood out to me, and this has been consistent from the moment of the first camp, which I believe was Sound Mind, Sound Body out in Michigan, uh, followed very closely after that by uh, Lindenwood. Uh, Lindenwood uh, Mega Camp, always a huge, huge event, uh, heavily attended by kids here in the state of Illinois, and then obviously follows with North Central College, UIndy, several others. Um, I think one of the one of the, the most common themes, whether you're in Michigan or any other camp, is that the offers have just dried up. It's it's crazy, but. You compare the amount of offers that have come out of those camps this year compared to what they did even just a year ago. I'm going to put a number on it. And again, there's no real specific way of measuring this, but I can tell you my experience in, in, in covering and keeping track of offers and what comes out and what doesn't, uh, at which level, the lack of offers this summer has been, well, it's been a couple of things. It's been disheartening. It's been, to me, it's been shocking. And there just is not, for. and, and again, a, a big focus and a big part of this is on the 2025 class. So, you know, it, it was the old story, uh, you know, you're going into your senior year, you, you do the one day camp circuit and you get your name out there and you get seen by the college coaches and hopefully something good comes of that. Now that's still happening. That isn't completely dried up, but the amount of, again, offers that have been extended, um, just the available amount of scholarships. Now we're talking D2. D2 is a little bit of a different beast, especially here in Illinois. We have one D2 that plays football in Quincy. Um Outside of that, everything here is Division One, FCS, or D3. So, again, uh, D2 has always been a little a little bit of obscurity. And, of course, I don't want to forget my friends at NAIA as well, JUCO, uh, College of DuPage. But, again, um, very limited actual cash scholarship available for football at the D2 level here. Uh, otherwise, you're going out of state uh, if you're from the state of Illinois. Um, FCS. It's not much out there, not much available. Again, portal, absolutely, uh, absolutely a huge impact. Talk to a lot of college coaches out there. Uh, I've got a lot of different opinions why that is. Some will tell you the talent level is down. Uh, some will tell you that because of the portal, um, there's just not that much scholarship availability to, to high school kids that the focus continues to be whether college coaches will admit it or not. It's a whole different deal, but you get them off the record and they will tell you uh, portal has snagged up a ton, a ton of those available opportunities that were there just a couple of years ago. Um, again, 
college coaches are at the one day camps. They are watching. They are talking to kids. Everything that they've done in the past is continuing um, today. So that part hasn't changed. It's just getting that offer, being extended that offer, is happening a little bit. But again, as I said, I would say a conservative number, I would say a third of those offers available just a year ago are available right now. And that's concerning, man. I tell you what, if you're a 2025 player or parent, you're nervous as hell right now about recruiting and where you're going to wind up. And you should be because again, it's, it's, it's such a, it's such a tough landscape to begin with the portal and, and all the COVID year we went through and everything else that just kept adding onto, onto, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze here in a second. <coughs> excuse me. Ugh. So, all right. So that's frightening. Um, what do you do if you're a 2025 parent prospect? What do you do? I don't know. It's a great question. I got asked that and, and I just kind of shrugged my shoulders and I asked it to college coaches and they kind of shrugged their shoulders. I think if you're a 2025 and you don't have a division one scholarship now, or really any scholarship offer now, you got to go back. You got to go back to the, you got to go back to the, to the beginning and, and really control what, what you can control, continue to reach out to schools, continue to fill out recruiting surveys. Uh, any coaches that you've had contact with during this camp season, maybe back in the spring in school, reach out to them, stay in touch. In the meantime, uh, look, it's summer. If you're done with the one-day camps, and let's face it here, another week or so, we're going to be wrapping up quite a few of them until obviously we come back in July, and especially at the, at the FCS level. A lot of in-state FCS schools have camps here in mid to late June and obviously some in July as well. So you have some opportunities there, but um, again, just don't know how many available scholarships are, are out there for those schools. So again, if you're a 2025, 20, get back to work with your team, continue to improve your, get, your game uh, and get ready for a big senior year because your senior tape is probably going to mean more now than maybe it ever has um, just to be able to open doors. And I'm not talking about power four or group of five or you know, it sounds like a bands at a headline festival riot fest uh headline by pop by by power four um i'm talking naia division three i'm talking every level of football just to get your name out there just to build up some traffic that is what you have to do because obviously if you're at that point now, it, it really hasn't happened for you in the camp circuit. And trust me, kids and parents, you are not the only one. There are many, many more now than ever before that are in that same damn boat. You've gone to camps. You've done well. You, you've put in the effort. Parents, you've spent cash out of pocket. You've traveled. You've, you've done all kinds of stuff. You paid for camps. Now it's time to get back to work again and, and continue to build up that resume the best way you can. It's about the best thing I can tell you right now. I, w I wish I had a golden ticket and, and the answer I don't. And a lot of people I trust out there also don't have that answer right now. The one thing they do know is that things are changing. I think the entire one day camp business, and it's a business and it's a big business. I think from the college perspective, something's got to change. Something has to come to fruition that can actually benefit these kids compared to what it is now. It's not really benefiting, in my opinion, right now. Uh, that's not a great thing. Um, but again, you can't you can't make schools offer. You just can't. You can't, you can't put a gun to their head and say, "Hey, offer them scholarships." You can't. They're going to do what's the best in the best interest of their program and what they see fit. And right now they see a transfer portal where they can wake up tomorrow and have eight kids transferring out of the program all of a sudden for whatever reason. Uh, and so they're going to look in that portal to try to re replace those kids. And unfortunately, high school recruiting is paying a very steep price for that. And I think, unfortunately, we'll continue to pay that price. 
So you've got less opportunity. You've got less scholarship offers in a large, and the, the pool hasn't changed. If anything, it's probably gotten a little bit bigger than before. Again, it's changed. Now here, here's another example of how a slight rule change, I think, has had a huge impact and has a huge telltale of where we're heading. Okay, June fifteenth. Okay, does it mean anything to you? Eh. I tell you what, if you're a 2026 kid getting recruited, oh, it it meant quite a bit on Saturday. So June fifteenth was the first day. I guess we'll call it the first day. I, I don't like the way that's termed, but NCAA kind of terms it that way. So it is June 15 was the the first day that you could draw recruiting interest and, and hear from a school, draw contact from a school if you're in a class of 2026. So what I found absolutely amazing, uh, there are also a handful of, of college camps, uh, most notably the Northwestern uh, Chicagoland Showcase Campus is a huge camp. I mean, it is gigantic. There are hundreds of coaches. There are a thousand. Sure, I'll say hundreds of almost thousands of kids at that camp. It is absolutely packed. It is absolutely crazy. And as I mentioned, it draws a ton of ton of coaches. So I obviously I didn't cover the camp. And, and again, there's various reasons for that. And, and again, it's nothing, nothing with Northwestern whatsoever. I had a chance to get to connect again with David Braun at the North Central College Camp. Bill O'Boy saw him. I, I've known both David and Bill for years and years. I had to invite to the camp and you know, I greatly appreciate it. But from my perspective, it's an incredibly difficult camp to cover. It is so large and so spread out. It's just, it's, it's honestly, it's impossible for me to cover. And so what's important, it used to be important. Again, there's another example of things changing was keeping track of and, and, and tracking the amount of scholarship offers that would come out of that Northwestern camp. Put it to you this way. I was, Maybe I'll say it, I was overwhelmed by the amount of 2026 20, kids tweeting out graphics that they received from colleges saying, Hey, we're recruiting you, we like you. Just buried anything that came out from those one day camps. And again, as I mentioned, and it was consistent, Northwestern was consistent with every other camp, very few offers came out of the Northwestern showcase. Now they might they might argue. That's cool. But everything I've seen and everything I tracked, and again, it's been consistent, very consistent all camp season long. Just not a lot going on there offer-wise. So what does that mean? Well, that contact day I moved, I believe it was September 1st, so it went from September 1st to June 15th. Um, <laughs> are the schools already moved on? Boy, it, it it sure as hell felt like it on Saturday. It felt like, oh, we're done with 25s. Time to move on to 26. Let's go 26s. And I get it. Kids are excited, and they should be. Uh, the colleges are getting fired up and excited about it. I guess they should be. Um, but to me, it was, a, it was like getting hit upside the head with a baseball bat as a wake-up saying, hey, Dummy, 2025s are done. We're telling you right now. We're moving on to 26s. <laughs> just, just hard to accept. It really isn't. And really, they really had to do. They really had to move that date to to now in the middle of the camp season. I don't know. It's again, maybe, maybe, maybe I asked too much, or or maybe I, I'm too protective of the seniors. I don't know, but they couldn't have waited a week or two for that date. I don't know. That's just my feeling. Don't don't crap all over the, the camp and the process that's going on now. And I think that's exactly. I mean, it's been bad enough. They're making official visits now in the summer. And I totally get why. And I'm I'm fine with it. I really am. But, you know, just, you know, 26s are going to have their moment. Let's face it. They're getting recruited already. They have been getting recruited for a year. But the, the timing I felt was incredibly ironic. And again, it was just another loud flashing neon sign saying 2025s over, over, over. Yeah. So uh, again, not great, um, but it is what it is. Um, it's, it's, I'm sure it's here to stay. Um, just kind of I, I, shocking the word. I don't know if the shocking is where I'm not shocked by anything anymore. Recruiting. 
Um, but surprising, no doubt about it. So again, uh, things are ramping up. Things are obviously getting slowing down a bit with the 2025s, especially once we hit the upcoming uh, dead period, which I think is another week. I think it's is it next week or the week after. I'll have to look. But I know it's coming up soon and kind of that puts a wrap on the obviously the power fours and the group of fives will be done with camps. And, you know, obviously the, the rest will be able to still have camps going through July. So something to remember. But, yeah, just some thoughts, some observations on, on recruiting right now these days. Um, not great news. <laughs> yeah. I wish I can come back and say, oh, it's been a record year, blah, blah, blah. No, no, it hasn't. It hasn't. It's uh, it's a story that continues to change. That much I do know. Uh, whether that's good or not good, it's, it's to be determined. But just thought I'd share that, some observations. If you have questions, and this is something I don't talk a lot about, but if you're a parent on the, on the Edgy Nation board and you have recruiting questions or questions about the process or anything, you can post it on the board. Happy to talk about it. And I'm going to put this video on the board as well. So if you have questions about this, did I miss anything? Is there something that you've seen or noticed about recruiting or the camp season? Uh, by all means, hit me up and, and, and let me know. You can always email me, edgytim at edgytim.com. That's never a problem. Or even through, if you're on the Rivals board, you can uh, you can DM me a message through the uh, messaging system there as well. And I'm always, always glad to help any way I can. So, yeah, just uh, some thoughts on recruiting, what's been going on. It's obviously been busy. We're getting some 25, some of the higher level 25s, and even some of the higher level 26s are making decisions already. Uh, Johnny O'Brien, the quarterback, lefty quarterback from Friend, 2026, just committed to Northwestern. So, again, that's Northwestern getting a commitment uh, well over a year in advance before Johnny left to sign a letter of intent. That's where we're going, especially that quarterback position that's – we're already there. So, yeah. So, again, the never fun – always fun, never ending, always changing. Football recruiting world. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week. Again, questions, comments, thoughts, post it on a message, DM, email me anytime. Thanks. Have a great week.